My name is Ron McCarville. I'm the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Studies in Applied Sciences. My home department is Recreation and Leisure Studies. And I'm primarily a business guy. I, teach, I used to teach for many years the Introduction to Leisure Studies, which is sort of my favorite big course. But uh, I teach primarily um, management, marketing, consumer behavior. Service quality is actually my thing. I study encounters between providers and clients and how do the providers line up resources to meet the client's desires. But in service provision, it's like teaching, you need two people, you need the provider and the client to, to co-produce the service together. So how do you get the client ready, the student ready, to um, consume the service, the class, um, as we might want them to? So it's how do we get everyone, all the resources lined up from both sides to make the encounter work and to optimize it each time. I was going to be a teacher originally, actually a grade six teacher. And I love seeing the light go on in somebody's eyes when they, when they get it. We have a President's Colloquium on Teaching and Learning each year. And one of the speakers one year said, profs tend to spend entirely too much time talking at their students. It's sort of that philosophy, if I've said it, you've learned it. And I've tried to back away from that because it doesn't work that well. It's not really engaging. So I was engaging my students, they were doing their th own thing, and I stepped away from it. And I'm watching them getting stuff, and they're working together, and their, their voices are going up, and people, and they're taking turns. And I realized that's what I enjoy. And I wasn't even involved. They were doing it themselves. One of my students one day, she said, now, Ron, we've got this and this and this. She said, I get that. And that, that pleased me a lot, because she was rolling along with me, and she knew where I was going. She said, but this is what I don't get. And she sort of leaned back in that chair, and she said, Ron, I don't get that. You know? And that was a magical moment, because she was rolling with it, she was getting it, she was enjoying that piece, but she, what she wanted to focus on was, I don't understand this, let's figure it out. So there's that sort of those moments I kind of cherish. There's always those moments where they're actually, they're working together and the volume is up and they're, some of them are shouting at each other, you know, they're having a great time, having fun. It's not in a mean-spirited way, but they're talking about the, the issues. I like that too. And then at the end of the day, it's the best is when, and I actually have, have along the top there, all my thank you cards is when they come back later and say, Ron, you know, I didn't get it then, but I appreciate it now. I think it starts with the respect for the student. If you respect them, you know, they may not be interested in your topic. I mean, you, they're not all geniuses. They're not all, I'm not a genius either. I have a lot in common with them that way. Sometimes they're not motivated. Some days I'm not motivated either. So we have a lot in common. Let's just start with that. We have a lot in common. They're not different from me. They're the same as me. I respect my material, I respect them, that's our starting point, let's go somewhere together. We talk about the client first and then the next step is we do an internal assessment. I love chalk. <laughs> There's chalk in the air, I'm having a good day. It's always about the client. And we work as soon as you may, might go around this circle many times before you figure out what you're about and then you would drop out of this process and begin to develop strategy. I use overheads as a cue to myself but I've got all the stuff. I don't give them everything. I gave them a structure on the overhead. And once they have that structure, I look at the structure, and I say, oh, well, that comes next, and I just talk, and I talk to them. I don't talk to a screen, and I don't talk to my, my notes. I talk to them. And I move around the stage, and that way, I'm sort of trying to um, show each of them that I care enough to pay attention to them. And if you start with that, good, thing, I, good things tend to happen. But I, I love the board because I can jump up and, and respond to questions they have because it's dynamic, whereas overheads are static. Every course should answer a single compelling question. And then within that course, every lecture should, should answer a sub-question. And within that lecture, or within the, I shouldn't call it a lecture, within that meeting, there should be a series of um, Key, variable, key themes that are discussed within that question. So for example, if I'm teaching anatomy, I might say, smoke can, can move under that door, but I can't, why not? And then so what happens is you give the students the question and the basic material to answer the question, and I guess the key then is to have them work among themselves to figure that out. Apparently they've learned very well from each other. Once they're given sufficient knowledge and enough motivation, that's why it has to be a compelling question. It's all about compelling questions. You need to be enthusiastic. You need to care about your material because if you care about it, your students will care about it. If you don't care, they won't. It's not about me at the front talking, being well-organized and being enthusiastic. That's the starting point and that's what I thought was the key. 
I'm really learning more and more that that's a starting point, but only that. And now I need to figure out what am I trying to do here and just not cover the material. It's have them struggle with issues that I think will take them somewhere important. And I'm going to stumble and fall, and so will they. But uh, as long as we have the rapport piece again, it, it should come together. That's, my, that's the plan.